one that can, uh, can, can do all things. Let's just pray, Lord, to let Georgia bring forth the message tonight, Lord. We just pray, Lord, to give you what to say. And we just thank you for it. And we just give you the precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen tonight. Good to be back with you all. <laughs> going to be preaching from the book of John tonight, the New Testament, chapter 15. We ain't going to be preaching on Palm Sunday, but we're going to be close, see me? Today's Palm Sunday, ain't it? Brother Roy, I'm sure, done an excellent job for y'all this morning, as he always does. We're going to be talking about the vine and the branches uh, tonight, the vine. How many knows who the vine is tonight? Somebody say it. Amen. Who's the branches? Amen. Amen. Verse 1. John 15. It says, I am, this is Jesus taught me, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or we'll call that the gardener. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gathered them and cast them to the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. Amen. This is between, they've just had the, uh, uh, Jesus and the disciples had had the Last Supper. And they're working their way up, Brother Hal, to uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, Jesus was a simple person, amen. And uh, Jesus wasn't a big, uh, he didn't talk above people's heads, amen. That's what kind of preacher I like to be, is, is the way Jesus, keep it simple. Because that's what folks need to understand, plain language, amen. Amen. Put it in layman's terms. So uh, a lot of times when Jesus would teach on things, he would do it by showing examples. So probably what was going on is as they journeyed and made their trek uh, from the upper room up to the garden where they was going on Mount Olives, they probably, Jesus probably seen some vines. And he was using this as an example. And this is how the Lord gave me this little message this week is... Uh, a couple of weeks ago there at the house, we had uh, we cleared some uh, uh, tree branches out. We'd trimmed the tops, Brother Dave, of trees uh, that was growing up in the power lines, and we trimmed them back down. And and I took and we'd piled them all up and, 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 and threw them over on, on, on the side of the road. <clears throat> and I was coming through her, and I noticed that uh, those tree branches still had a little bit of green left in them. And I thought to myself, they're not going to stay that way much longer because they don't have anything giving them life. Amen. And that's the way it is with Jesus. See, those, those tree branches that I cut, those tree branches that stacked up next to the road, they're going to die. And you know what's going to happen to them? Uh, they're going to dry out. And they're going to get real good and dry, Brother Hal. And I'm going to set them on fire here in a couple months. Amen. Lord, help me not catch the hills on fire again. Thank you, Lost Creek Fire Department, for, for coming every time I set a fire. I have to call the fire department. Amen. But it's going to dry out because it's still not connected to the tree, amen? And what's going to happen to that tree is uh, we cut those branches way down. We pruned them down just as Jesus is talking here in His Word. They're going to grow back out. They're going to spring forth life because they're connected to the tree. They're getting their nutrients from the source. But those ones that's cut off, those that ain't got hooked into the main source, Brother Bill Bowling, uh, they're going to die and they're going to wither away. So is the same as people in the world today. Amen. And, and I see I see many a fruit bearers in here tonight. Why? Because Why? you burn your fruit right now. Why? You're in the house of God tonight on Sunday night when you could be anywhere. There's all kinds of basketball games going on TV. 
There's all kinds of stuff to do out in the world. Walmart. Uh, uh, you could be anywhere tonight, but you've chosen it right there. That's showing much fruit. Amen. Amen. You know, you can show fruit and you, you can show a little more fruit and you can show much fruit. And Jesus said, if you abide in Him, you're going to show much fruit. Amen. And that'll come part of being in Jesus. But if you're not in Jesus tonight, if you're out in the world, you're going to die. Amen. 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 Don't get all excited on me now. I know I missed this morning, but y'all don't have to get all excited. I know you missed me. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our source of life. Amen. Can we say that tonight? Jesus, He's our source of life tonight. And without Jesus, it's going, we're going to be like those old branches I piled up. We're going to wither away and die. Is exactly what's going to happen to us. No matter what, we can't do it on our own. Amen? Tonight, the, the, the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift, it comes from up above. Amen? Anything good in us tonight, we get from our Heavenly Father, Jesus. Any good act we do, any, any fruit that we produce, we do it because we're hooked into the main source. We're hooked into the vine. And that's Jesus Christ. Without Him, we ain't going to do nothing good. Amen? We may counterfeit good things, but, but we're not going on to uh, continually produce good gifts without being in Christ Jesus tonight. Amen? Amen? And what many people try to do, many lost people, what lost people wants to do is when they start feeling the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. How many knows in here tonight that the Holy Spirit is God? Amen? Amen? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit's who He's left with us. Uh, uh, we, we're, we, we do good things because the Holy Spirit's inside us, living inside us. Uh, the vine, we're hooked to the vine, and, and that's why we do good things. But people that's lost and they feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, they try to put the, they try to put the cart before the horse. Amen. They want to produce good works. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, let me, let me quit cussing, or, or let me quit drinking, or let me quit going to the bar, and I might think about coming to church down there with, what you're trying to do, uh, uh, is you're not connected to the vine, but you're trying to produce the works of the vine. You're, you're, you're trying to, to counterfeit, produce uh, uh, the works, the fruit. You're trying to bear fruit. Amen? When you don't have the fruit bearer inside of you. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to produce in that, and you will never sustain that. You'll never see a lost person sustain good works uh, because they're lost. They don't have life. Let's see here what 1 John 5 11 and 12 says. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. That's it right there. My bad, Quentin. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Amen? Verse 12. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son of God Hath not life. Pretty easy stuff tonight, ain't it? Pretty simple stuff, ain't it? It don't take a it don't take a rocket scientist to to figure that out. I was watching today. Uh, they was talking about putting a man on the moon. And when John F. Kennedy said in the early '60s, and he took off, said in this decade we'll put a man on the moon. They had some smart people to figure out. Some of you lived through that. Uh, they had some smart people. They had a lot of failures. They had a lot of things that had to go just right. To take a man from earth, put him on the moon, and bring him back. But we're not dealing with rocket scientists. We're dealing with easy stuff tonight. If you have Jesus, amen. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've got life. You've got life. For the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, says this. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Without Jesus, without the vine... You are going to die. Amen? Amen? Amen. We all are going to die physically unless the Lord comes back. I'm Lord, I'm hoping you come back. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I don't want to die. But if, if time turns, we're all going to die in this physical life. But we're not all going to die that second death. Amen? We're not all going to die. And that's what that's talking about right here. If we are in Jesus, amen, if we are saved, if we're born again, we're going to live forever. Well, there's a whole world of people that's going to split hell wide open. Amen. Amen. I was reading a bunch of stuff today that atheists was writing on. I was reading the, the newspaper online up there, the Cincinnati newspaper, and they was raising a, a fuss over because they was trying to use tax dollars to build the, the, the ark, the, whatever it is. Anybody? The ark. 
what is it, the art museum or something they're trying to build up there. And, and these atheists was on there, and man, you ought to hear them. They, they always, you, you know, they put up the, the, the same old... Uh, the same old arguments, you know, that, that uh, and blah, 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 blah. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that, that God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen? The things that seems foolish. Listen, people who's atheists, people who don't believe, people who denies that there's a God, they think that it's foolish to serve a God. Amen? They think the Bible, they think going to church, they think doing the things that you do are foolish. Amen. But God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. There will be a day when every man and every knee is going to bow before an almighty uh, God and on judgment day and you're going to confess Him as Lord and Savior. Whether, whether No matter what you do in this life, one thing God give everybody and every one of you down here tonight, He give you a free will. Amen. He done it back from the beginning. Adam and Eve, He give us all free will. And, he, and what He done? You can serve me. You can believe in me. I have give you all the evidence. I have give you the Holy Spirit. I sent my son to die for me. You can do it. Or you can dismiss me. Amen. Ain't it great to serve a God who gives you a choice? Amen. President Obama, he, uh, he just touched down in Cuba. Amen. The first president to uh, be in Cuba in 88 years. 88 years. Because in Cuba, uh, for all these years, they've lived under communism. They don't have a choice, do they? You do what the government tells you to do. I'm so glad that God's not that way with us. Because if you don't have a choice, you don't make the choice to serve God, do you? Amen. If somebody's sitting and holding a sword and saying, I'm going to cut your head off and unless you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it don't work that way. He says, Amen, here I am. You accept me or you deny me. It's you. If you accept me, you'll have life. Amen. You accept me, you'll have life. If you deny me, You'll have death. Amen. Imagine going through the world without the Lord in your life. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how, how people in the world does it. Goes through the world and lives in the world without having Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, I know how they do it. I see them every day in the town on, on the main streets of Main Street, brother. They, they take pills. They drink alcohol. They sell their body. They go and charge their credit cards up. They go and buy new things, all trying to buy happiness or find it at the bottom of a pill bottle, and it's not going to happen because there is no life in that. Some of the happiest, most peaceful people I know tonight is Christian people who knows that they have eternal life through Jesus Christ and the Lord. So listen, the bills might be stacked that high. Amen. You might not own the house. I say most people in there, some of you do, but most of us probably don't own the house we live in tonight. And Lord have mercy knows I live in, I don't even know mine. It's no broke down double wide sliding off a mountain up there. Lord help us tonight. Amen. <laughs> Chase Manhattan, you can come get it anytime you want to. <laughs> but we might, but we got peace, amen. We got peace. And that is the fruit of the Spirit. Let's move on here. You will know a person. You will know a person by what kind of fruit they bear, amen. Amen. You hear people say, well, I got saved, I've done this, and if they go right back out and they do the same old things that they've always been doing, they ain't get saved. Amen. Amen. They don't have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. You will know a person by what kind of fruit they burn. Now let's see what Matthew 7 says. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Amen. Do you see where I'm going with this tonight? If you've got Jesus Christ, if you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you know what? You can't go out and you can't live in the world and have a peaceful life doing that. Amen. If you've got the Holy Spirit inside you guiding you, if you've got a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you ain't going to go to Walmart and fill your pockets full of stuff without paying for it. You ain't going to go to the pain clinic and, 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 and keep loading up on pills to, to sell scripts to people and and peddle your dope uh, uh, to children. You're not going to do that stuff. If the Holy Spirit's guiding you, you know that. You're not going to lay in the bars and the honky tonks. Now, I ain't saying you ain't going to sin. 
Lord knows, for we just read it, uh, uh, for all of sin fell short of the glory of God. Man, if you all, I say this every time I preach, but if you'd have followed me around this week, you'd be like, he ain't no preacher, man. He ain't no preacher. He's a failure. Yes, I, I fail God every day. Sometimes miserably, Brother Dave. Sometimes miserably. Sometimes uh, if you had a trial, I wouldn't be convicted of being a Christian the way I act. But Lord God, I thank Jesus Christ for His grace and mercy. I'm glad that the Lord forgives. I'm glad He wipes away my sins as far as the east is from the west. I'm glad they're washed away, never to be mentioned or remembered no more. That don't mean your wife won't mention them to you no more, Murray. <laughs> that don't mean that your husband won't mention them to you no more. But God will never mention them against you no more because they're washed away. Amen. You will know a tree by its fruits. Amen. That's uh, that's why if 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 you're if if you're a Christian, you're going to have to do what's in God's will. Amen. You're going to have to uh, to you're going to to have peace. You're going to have to live and, and do things that God would have. And and God says that uh, Jesus said that uh, that if you love Him, you'll follow His commandments. Amen. He said, you will know them that loves me because they follow my commandments. Uh, and uh, a good tree will produce good fruit. And a bad tree will produce bad fruit. Amen. That's like uh, uh, people who uh, lives a different lifestyle. Like, or, or, or maybe, and, and, I, and I ain't preached on a, a homosexuality in a long time, but uh, uh, a lot of times when, when you start talking to somebody about homosexuality and how it's ungodly, amen, we can all confess her and that. The Bible says it's ungodly. It's an abomination. It even goes on to say, well, the first thing people will say, well, you are judging me, amen. Listen, I'm not judging nobody. I who am I? Joe Engel can cast nobody's soul into hell. I can condemn nobody. But you know what I can do? I can tell a I can tell a tree if it's producing good fruit or not. Amen. I am a good fruit judger. Amen. I can tell you what good fruit looks like. Amen. I can tell you the difference between a rotten apple and I can tell you uh, the difference between a good old Granny Smith. Oh man, them Granny Smiths are good, ain't they? Tonight. Amen. I can tell you the difference if something's got worms crawling out of it or something that's looking shiny tonight. Amen. 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 And if you are a Christian, you're going to produce good fruits. Amen. And if you and if you walk with the devil, you're going to live like hell. That's all I can say about it tonight. That's all I can say. Because you know why? Because I I have done willful sin. I sometimes I willful sin. You know where it leaves me? Miserable. Guilty. Condemned. Who wants to live like that? I need peace. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Amen. We all going to mess up. I ain't telling you that you're going to live a perfect life. I'm telling you you're going to mess up. But you're not going to continuously intentionally keep living a life that is messed up. Amen? You're going to have to do what's right. You will know them by their fruits. Amen? And I didn't... And uh, Galatians 2.20 says this. Lord, help me find it. Praise the Lord. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ lives in me. Amen. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. You don't live your life no more. Sister Sue, Toots, Hal, when you got saved, you don't live your life no more. Uh, uh, he, he who will lose his life, it says in the New Testament, if you lose your life, amen, you'll gain life. Amen. Amen. Who lives your life for you? Right there. It's not no more I, but Christ Jesus who's inside of us. And what kind, What is some of the fruit of this Spirit? I'm closing right now in a minute. I'm closing right now in a minute. If y'all want to come and get a song, song greedy. Uh, maybe a long live the king. I'd like to hear that. But uh, uh, what is the fruits of the Spirit? What is some of these fruits that you produce? Well, the Bible tells us, and I, I didn't tell you this in Quentin, I'm sorry, but uh, let me tell you, it says in Galatians 5.22, 
But the fruit of the Spirit is this. Let me give you some example of what some good fruit is that you'll produce if you're a Christian tonight. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen? Love? Amen? I'm some of the some of the, the the number one thing I can tell if you're a Christian or not is if you love people. Amen. If you love people. That's a sign right there that love. You will have love. You won't be full of hate. Uh, uh, you'll have love. Joy. Amen. You'll be happy, won't you? Love. Joy. Peace. Amen. These are some of the fruits. You will have peace. Long suffering. That means you'll be patient with people. You'll be long-suffering. You'll forgive many times as God is long-suffering towards us. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Amen. That is part of it right there. That's the fruit of the Spirit. If you're connected to the vine... If you're in the vine in Jesus tonight, you're going to produce things like that. Love, joy, happiness, peace. Y'all so going to do what y'all doing tonight. You're going to come to church. Amen? You're going to tell people about Jesus. You want to see people get saved. You're going to bring them into the house of the Lord. Those are the fruits that you will produce. Amen? Some of the fruits you might not produce is uh, you want to gossip. You want to backbite. You want to stir up trouble. You, you want to steal. You want to drink. You want to, you, want to, you want to live like hell. Amen. Amen. That's the thing about Facebook. Facebook, I, I see many times, you could use Facebook, Brother Dave, uh, for many a good things. Amen. Or you can get on there and you can gripe and complain. I see people all day long on my face, oh, uh, gripe and complain and wanting to start a racket at all times. Amen. I get ready sometimes to get on there and say something and say, Lord, no, there ain't no use of doing that. You're just going to stir up trouble. Let them be. Amen. That's between them and God. But sometimes that's your fruits. What kind? A good tree will produce a good fruit. Amen. A bad tree is going to produce bad fruits. Amen. Amen. There's a music place tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Long live the king tonight. There was a man. Let's stand probably. His name was Jesus. He walked upon the hill called Calvary. He gave his life the Oh, but he 
Easter week, Palm Sunday. They all praised him, Sister Sue. They all, uh, they, Hosanna, Hosanna! Yeah, the, the, the king has come. Amen. They was all happy on Friday. Just a few days later, they had him nailed to an old rugged cross. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nailed to an old cross. For six hours, he hung there and he bled and he died and he suffered. Not, You know what? Not because he had to. He said he could have called upon 10,000 angels, he said. Mm -hmm. And he could have he could have took us up, but he hung on that cross because he knew we'd mess up. He knew we'd be sinners. He knew that we had to have something. We had to we had to we had to have somebody die in our place. How? Amen. Amen. And thank God for Jesus Christ dying on that cross for mercy. And no no greater. Listen, I like the Fourth of July. I like Thanksgiving, and and I like a I like Memorial Day. But listen, the the greatest day. Now the year is Easter, amen. Good Friday, that's pretty close. That's when he died. But Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead, amen. He rose from that tomb. That's the difference between Mohammed and Buddha and all these other fake gods. That tomb is empty. He ain't there. All that remains are, are uh, blood, or uh, how's it go? Grave clothes, Grave clothes and bloodstains, amen. Thank God tonight. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for dying on that cross for our sins, Lord. We pray as we walk with you, Lord, in this Christian life. We pray, Lord, that you will help us bear good fruits, Lord. Holy Spirit, convict us when we're not living right. Convict us, Lord. Uh, lead us down the path, Lord. Lead us down that narrow path that we should be walking, Lord. And most of all, Lord, let us produce our fruits. We produce our fruits because we love you. We do it out of gratitude. We do it out of thanks. We don't do it to get to heaven because getting us to heaven come by the shedding blood of Jesus Christ on that cross. We, 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 we do good fruits. We bear good fruits because we love you, Lord. That's how you said you know we'd love you if we keep your commands. Help everybody in here tonight, Lord. Uh, bless them, Lord. Bless their finances, Lord. Uh, uh, bless their relationships. Bless their marriages. Bless their kids. Bless their kids' kids tonight. We'll pray, Lord. Take everybody on safe. Bring us all back next time. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. <laughs>